and us acknowledge that we're standing on the ancestral lands of the Abenaki people. We honor their elders, past and present, as well as future generations. The Abenaki have lived in this region for 12,000 years before the first white settlers came. Please take a moment to consider how the many layers of colonialism have affected the Abenaki, including violence, displacement, migration, and settlement as we gather here today. Let us consider how this history of colonialism and land theft relates to what we are here to what we are here today to demand. We also pause to recognize their way of life in harmony with the land. We are here today to demand an immediate ceasefire in Israel and Gaza. We are here to present a loud and loving Jewish voice that can hold tight to the safety of our people while we hold the safety of all people. As Jews, we believe passionately in collective liberation and the sacredness of all life. Our responsibility in this moment is to reach out, bring in, and organize other Jews, including those who may not yet share our politics, may feel confused, and may have familial ties. In Israel, we do this because we believe in a safe and liberated shared future. As Jews, we know what happens when people are dehumanized and expelled, and we will not be silent. Never again means never again for anyone. Our intention today is to gather and take a clear stand as Jewish Vermonters. We demand that our government do all it can to stop the violence. We demand an immediate ceasefire and that not one more US dollar or weapon be sent to Israel to further continue and escalate the violence. Maybe two. Just before we gather today, we have sent three delegations into our three right, congressional let's, let's offices. And just in just a few minutes, we're going to have report backs from each of those three teams to hear how that went. Um, I just wanted to orient folks to a couple pieces. We do have a safety team. Um, they're in yellow vests, so they're sort of on the perimeter. We also have designated folks to give quotes to the press. So if someone from the press approaches you, you can direct them to, who is our um, coordinator? You can direct them to this person here, to Irene, who will help organize quotes for the press. Um, did folks get song sheets? Yeah? Okay, let's start and sing a song. I want to start with the song Courage. Fun to like it. You know how to do it? I can turn. Alright, I'm going to do my best with the song. Yeah? Be a call and response, and then we're going to do part of it together. Okay, so first couple lines are call and response.
Okay, so let's have some report backs from our congressional teams who went in. Um, has anyone seen the Bernie Sanders team? Are they back yet? They're not back yet? Okay. Um, Kathy, yes. Actually, I'm going to give you a second to settle. Yeah. Um, I'd like to bring up Alyssa, who was with our team, um, speaking with Peter Welch's office. So if you could just share a little bit about what happened, what you did, and what was the response. Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Um, we read our letter to uh, someone named Brian, who's a staffer at the Welch office, um, and engaged in a series of questions. I think my crew wanted to keep engaging, so they're still talking. Um, and we did ask, like, how can we have more of an impact on Welch? And they said calling is really important and emailing. And they said that individually kind of drafted calls and emails are really important, not just like the Action Network campaign ones. And so just really encourage people to call and email and continue to call and email. And um, we also asked for a meeting with him. And so if that occurs, we'll definitely invite others to um, join. Thank you. Um, Kathy, would you like to share what happened at Bernie Sanders' office? Hi. Thank you again for being here. Um, we spoke with Bernie's staffer, Katie Becker. Um, she uh, she listened to us read our letter, making demands for a ceasefire, for um, signing, but uh, not signing on, but introducing legislation similar to Cory Bush's um, in the Senate, and to consider stopping USA to Israel. Um, and she said basically, you know, Bernie is on the floor constantly. She gave me a copy of what most of us might have seen yesterday, his, his speech about um, asking for a humanitarian cause. Um, and we reiterated that is not enough, uh, that people are dying every day, probably by the thousands, yeah. And so I asked her, you know, I said we are very happy at how Bernie has moved through the years on, he's moved his position on this, we know he needs to hear from us, what does he need right now? And she said just keep, just keep coming to our office, keep calling, keep, I mean it's all the same stuff. I, I don't know what the answer is, but Bernie does move, unlike some of our other representatives who don't seem to go that far. So there we are, we'll be back again. She is going to get back to us, hopefully in the next one to two weeks, about a meeting with Bernie himself. So we'll see. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Deborah Stoleroff to talk about what happened in Becca Balance office. So we did the same thing as, as the other groups. We, what we read a letter, we reiterated that we want to ceasefire now. We pushed and we pushed and we kept asking over and over again, why are you not taking steps right now? Every hour, if in this moment, someone is being killed and we want you to be working on this right now. We got, as you can imagine, she's thinking about it, right? She's trying to do what she thinks is right. We reiterated that, that in fact, by not doing something now, besides the fact that all these people are dying, it makes us less safe for us as Jews in the world as well. And that she needs to be thinking about that. And it's it really, I have to say, right now in this moment, I hate saying that because it's not about us right now in this moment, right? But we have to go to where she's at to try to move her. Similarly to um, the other groups, we asked, what could you do? And it's all about getting in touch and consistently trying to push. She's not hearing from enough of us. So if you have not written yet, if you have not called, pick up the phone and call. You need to do it tonight. Put their number in your phone. Well, that's just, we also, we also reiterated that. Right, she's done nothing, right? So, yes. 
So anyways, um, we're, we too, we're going to have a meeting with her, hopefully in the next week. Um, I told David, who we met with, David Shear, that we will, I will call him tomorrow. And hopefully we will have an in-person meeting. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick note, I'm, what we're hearing from the teams that met with the congressional members is they need to hear from us more. Um, so if you look at your chan sheet, in the bottom corner there are these two QRL codes. QR codes. QR, QR codes. <laughs> Dating myself. Um, so you can scan these and there's people here that can help you do this if you need help. Um, and that'll take you directly to contacting them and that's something like if every single one of us does that today, if every single one of us does that as much as possible moving forward, it act, it's what we're hearing when it's needed right now. There are also QR codes on some of the posters, so if you're holding one with a QR code, you can share it with your neighbors. This will continue, of course, we need to keep our pressure on and, and increase the pressure. Yep. Um, there's folks with clipboards and sign-up sheets and also on the chant sheets and on the handouts that are around um, that give some good historical overview. Um, there are QR code, the same QR codes are on there and one of them is also to sign up to get on our mailing list so that we can contact you for future actions. I want to invite folks to sing another song with me. Um, all my Jewish siblings, speak up. Let's sing Lo Yisagoi. invite up Liz Bloom to share with us some words. Liz is a key organizer with Jewish Voice for Peace, Vermont. And also Ayla Kay is going to speak after. What? Hey, welcome everyone. I'm Liz Blum from Norwich, Vermont. And I am Ayla Kay from Burlington. We are Jews. Vermonters and members of the rapidly growing Vermont chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. Jewish Voice for Peace is the largest progressive Jewish anti-Zionist organization in the world. We're organizing a grassroots, multiracial, cross-class, intergenerational movement of U.S. Jews in solidarity with the Palestinian freedom struggle, guided by a vision of justice, equality, and safety and peace for all. Like generations of Jewish leftists before us, we fight for collective liberation by building solidarity across communities. 
by creating home, safety, and belonging where we land in the diaspora. We believe that through organizing, we can and will dismantle the institutions and structures that sustain injustice and grow something new, joyful, beautiful, and life-sustaining in their place. We are, not help we are not helpless to change this world, and that's why we're constantly calling for the end of Israeli occupation of Palestine and the end of the bombing of Gaza right away. Together, we're being joined by more and more people around the world who want peace, a ceasefire for the hostages to be freed safely, an end to U.S. aid to Israel, and humanitarian support for the people of Gaza. We watch in horror as Israel carries out ethnic cleansing, raining bombs, terrorizing and killing the people of Gaza. The occupied West Bank is exploding with settler and IDF violence, interfering with the funerals of those killed by Israeli forces. There is no shelter, food, water, or medicine for the people of Gaza. They are trapped in an ever-diminishing space. 2.3 million people, half of them children. What do Palestinians get? Separation and apartheid. Bombing and ethnic cleansing. We say, say it with me. Not in our name, not with our money. Not in our name, not with our money. For 75 years, Israel has displaced Palestinians, justified massacres by the Israeli army, the destruction of Palestinian villages and farms, and the separation of Palestinian families. As Jews, our own history teaches us the dangers of being kept separate, of apartheid, of supremacy and nationalism. Zionism is not our home. We reject the notion of an ethno-religious state. Does you stand on the page for a Thank you so much. Uh, we reject the notion of an ethno-religious state based on occupation, dispossession, and militarism. We see Israeli fascism, which places power and violence at the heart of political culture, as purposefully accelerating the crisis in order to manufacture the pretext for ethnic cleansing. By fighting this state violence against the Palestinian people, we're also fighting an ideology that is spreading in our country. One that dehumanizes communities, whether they be black, trans, or queer, Muslim, Arab, immigrant, in order to gain power and establish supremacy. Yeah, big boo for that one. The Israeli military also engages in deadly exchange, training our U.S. police in violent tactics, the sale of weapons and technology that surveil and squash dissent movements right here at home. We know that the struggle for justice in Palestine is part of a global struggle against the outright violence of apartheid and the hatred and fear of supremacists. We have a long road ahead of us in, to end Israeli apartheid and heal its intergenerational damage. The oppression and separation of Palestinians harms everyone, Israel and Palestine. So we're here today asking you, will you personally do whatever you can to stay in this fight for the long term, whatever way that looks like for you? Will you stay in the struggle with us for a long time? One more time. Can we count on you to stay in this struggle? We call on everyone to our three members of Congress and to demand a ceasefire. Say it with me. Ceasefire! Immediate humanitarian aid to Gaza. Immediate humanitarian aid to Gaza. An immediate end to funding Israel with our dollars. Immediate end to funding Israel with our dollars. You don't have to say this part, but. Thank you for joining us and continuing to speak out and resist. We're going to sing another song. 
This one, I believe, was um, Bernice Johnson Reagan, Sweet Honey in the Rock, Ella's song. Here we go. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. to invite up Jory Hurst to share some words. Is it really? Yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm Jory oh. Hurst. I'm a public school teacher at Burlington High School. I'm also a Jewish resident of Burlington. Uh, oh, you can't hear me. Better? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Oh. I'm usually quite loud, so. Okay. Um, I'm actually really grateful for whoever made this beautiful art around me. <gasps> Hi! And my student job. Um, but it's so fitting. I'm, I'm worried I'm not in quite the right rally mood because all I'm feeling is grief about thinking about speaking in front of you today. And so I was sort of grateful to be surrounded by these two women. I mean, not grateful, but they're the right vibe. So, um, okay, sorry, I'm going to hold that really close. Um, so this is a time of immense grief. Um, watching the horrors of genocide unfold before our eyes in Gaza is just breaking my heart. Um, I keep finding myself returning to some of my familiar Jewish touchstones to help me kind of stay guided. Um, there's a poster in my classroom that reads, whoever destroys a single life destroys the entire world. Any of you may know this. Whoever saves a single life saves the world entire. And it's from the Talmud, which is sort of rabbinic teachings on the Torah. And I just recently found from a student the same line, almost exactly, uh, a surah in the Quran. Um, that's the same message. That was really beautiful. Just the reminder of the sanctity of life. The idea of tzedakah, this deep commitment to justice, in Judaism, a sacred duty. It's not about charity at all. It's about knowing that people deserve to live with dignity. And that every year at Rosh Hashanah, I recommit to these ideas of tzedakah and teshuva, this like commitment to the dignity of others. Um, and for 75 years, we've been watching what's been happening for Palestinians. And there is so little dignity and justice in that. And so that is part of why I'm here today. Um, I think again of this line also from the Torah, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdof, which means justice, justice, we shall pursue, which repeats itself twice as a reminder that you cannot give up, you have to keep saying it to yourself, and that peace and justice are not the same thing, that justice is about equity and about making sure people are able to live the lives they deserve their lot to live and that their children are safe. Um, and then lastly, this idea of tikkun olam, repairing the world, another commandment to live by. Um, a deeply held value for me and many others here, I think. And just being here with you in this space feels like an act of tikkun alum to be together. Um, and it is all those th these threads that for me it feels imperative that we declare today, as the leaders of this, or of this rally have said, that for, Jew for me as a Jew and for all of us to call for a ceasefire, to demand an end to U.S. military funding of Israel, no more lives lost, not in our names, not in our never name. again. And in thinking about grief, <laughs> which is really where I am, um, I think I'm finding I need a lot of stillness to access my own grief, which then sort of allows me to find space for action. And so I'm actually gonna let us have a moment of silence. It's maybe weird to do this now, but um, that's where I am and I'm the first person here, so 
Um, I just this morning looked up, I just wanted to give some numbers from this morning updated, and then I just want us to hold about 30 seconds of silence. And if you're near someone, and you, especially if you know them, or even if you don't, and you want to reach out and maybe be connected, that would be lovely. Um, but so, from the Palestinian Ministry of Health, this morning there were over 7,000 reported dead. Um, they don't have exact numbers on children, but it is many of them. Um, there are some reports that are estimating that at least 50 of the Israeli captives um, have been killed by Israeli airstrikes. Um, we knew that there were 1,300 Israelis killed on October 7th as well, and the numbers are just growing in Gaza by the moment. Um, so let us pause collectively to note and just remember the amount of grief that we're holding in for the lives lost. Thank you all for being with us here in this moment of tomorrow. I want to give a big thank you to Bread and Puppet Theater that sent these beautiful banners to, to frame us today. Next, I wanted to bring up someone who I think exemplifies dignity and in, in the struggle. Um, so I wanted to invite up Wafiq Faur and Dana Decker. this imaginary border that we're not all humans, which we are. Um, it kills me. The capital has a military kills me. And so I'm not going to read my speech, but I'm going to say that, you know, tonight, go home and hug your family and just be grateful that you live in Vermont. And say enough is enough. And call those numbers and tell them to Stop aiding this war and all the other wars that you don't even know about. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. My name is Wafiq Faour. I'm a Palestinian born refugee in Lebanon. My family still living both size of the occupation border. Thank you, Jewish Boys, for peace. Thank you for all you do. Us Palestinians and the Jewish community worldwide, we are in chain together. We have no choice. When we lost our identity as Palestinians and we lost our land, the same enemy took from you your identity and from a Jewish faith, you became labeled either connected to Israel or Zionism. You have a choice here. You have a choice here, either you stand with us or you stand
understand we've done. No middle class. No middle class. Thank you, George, for peace, for going to those offices of representative. But the problem with those offices is that either they are part of this imperial connection between the United States and Israel, which is the same history of colonialism, expansion, ethnic cleansing, racism, and apartheid, or they are cowards. I say they are both. They are both. So what's the alternative? The alternative are those people in the front of us who believe in justice and believe resistance to occupation, believe resistance to apartheid and freedom of Palestinians. This is the alternative. There is no middle ground. No middle ground. I don't have all the evening and I'm not going to tell you what's the history of Palestine, Israel, but I want to tell you a story. I just heard it yesterday on 32nd. It will sum up the history of Palestine for 75 years. A 10 year old. Palestinian from Gaza get injured under the rubble of his house. The ambulance come to take him. He hang on his backpack. The helper asked him, you don't need it. Don't you know where we're taking you? He said, yes, to the hospital. He said, leave this bloody backpack. He said, remnants of my brother inside the bag. This is the history of Palestine, that a victim carrying another victim, walking with other victim, and die. Our children are dying. Almost 3,000 children are dying. There is no alternative for Palestinians but one thing. And if you don't support it, you're not supporting the Palestinians. For freedom, we have nothing but resistance. Resistance! Resistance! Thank you. Um, I'm going to let a chant that's a call and response, so you just say what I say. Please. Palestinians have Palestinians have the right to live in freedom. The right to live in freedom. The right to return home. The right to return home. Palestinians have Palestinians have the right to live in freedom. The right to live in freedom. For many of us, from Jewish families, as one could imagine, taking a stand on the right side of history can be a scary and, um, for some, dangerous thing. I know I was personally impacted many years ago when cousins of mine found out about solidarity work that I was doing, and I ended up on all kinds of Zionist um, 
magazines and lists in the Israeli government that landed me in detention in Israel. And part of what we're trying to do here is to build our community, to support each other, to continue being on the right side of history. And there are more of us than we think. Yeah. There really are. And it means so much to us to know that we have the support of our community. Our, you know, the beloved community that stands for justice and equality. And so I just want to give a few shout outs of groups that have either come with folks here today or have sent us messages in the past two, three days that they really support us being here today. I want to thank Migrant Justice. The Education Justice Coalition of Vermont, the Vermont Workers Center, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, the Dartmouth Palestine Solidarity Coalition, the Vermonters for Justice in Palestine, the Tempest Collective, the Student Worker Collective at Dartmouth University. Members of our labor community, where are you? Are you here? <laughs> Teachers, where are you? <laughs> Students, <laughs> caregivers of all kinds. <laughs> so we see you, we thank you, and please continue to stand with us. I wanted to make a, a few announcements, because there's a lot going on, and we just want to bring everyone with us. So first, um, there is a resolution that is happening here in Burlington that is asking voters in Burlington, I believe, to sign on supporting an apartheid-free zone here in the city of Burlington. This is a fabulous campaign. This is organized by the American Friends Service Committee. They're doing this all over the country, encouraging communities to become apartheid-free zones. And so, folks with clipboards for that, raise them up high if you have one. So I see one of these folks around, look around, spin around. If you live in Burlington, sign up on one of these. Um, also, there are folks around with clipboards to sign up to be connected more with Jewish organizing around this. Raise your hand high with those clipboards. There's one there. There's another one back there, and there's a third one here. So sign up here if you want to stay involved. Um, as I mentioned, a couple people mentioned we're building a, a statewide chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace. And so if you click on that QR code, you can sign up there. And we're working as fast as we can to build our capacity as we go. Um, so stay tuned. We're going to have a, a we'll have upcoming new member meetings, orientations, actions, gatherings. So stay tuned for that. Um, there is going to be a national rally in DC on November 4th. And here in Burlington, there is going to be a Vermont State rally. So come on out to that. It's going to be here in Burlington. Yeah. Um, Mal, where's Mal? Mal, come on up. Mal, are you here? I wanted to invite Mal Siegel to come up. Folks, I'm sure have been hearing about what happened this week at UVM with the lecture that was canceled tonight, moved online. <laughs> so I wanted to invite Mal up, who's a graduate student there, to read a statement that came out from students at UVM. My name is Mal, I'm a graduate student. I'd like to share two excerpts. I'm going to share two excerpts from two publicly available statements. One is from UVM's SJP Students for Justice in Palestine. And 
and the other is an excerpt from the October 18th statement from the board of the Will Miller Social Justice Lecture Series. The UVM administration canceled this week's Will Miller Social Justice Series with Muhammad El Kurd, one of the most important and influential Palestinian voices in the entire world, against the wishes of both sponsoring departments and the dean of CAS. We are repulsed by UVM's decision to center this event in a blatant betrayal of their supposed commitment to openness and justice. Even more outrageous than the decision itself is their reasoning. Their excuses hinged on safety concerns that they did not have the capacity to accommodate. An obvious lie, as they have more than enough resources to protect the safety of a seated guest lecture with one entrance. Their true motive was revealed in one of their paragraphs. This is Additionally, our safety and security concerns extend beyond the date of the event to secondary impacts to our campus affiliates that are foreseeable. Therefore, the event will not be held on UVM campus. UVM is directly implying that a Palestinian poet and attendees of his event are a danger to other students. This rhetoric is disgusting and racist. It is indefensible. It sends a clear message to Palestinian students that you are seen as a threat, that we do not care about your free expression, and that we will make no effort to protect your safety. That was from the SJP's statement. I'm now going to move on to an excerpt from the Will Miller Social Justice Lecture Series. Mohammed El Kurd speaks as a poet, journalist, and activist about his own and others' experiences as Palestinians living under occupation. He writes for Mondo Weiss and The Nation and participates with many other groups and diverse individuals in a global movement for equality and justice. In his poetry, in his journalism, and in his public intellectualism, he is an outspoken critic of Israel's policies. Groups as diverse as Jewish Voices for Peace and the American Association of University Professors have affirmed that the conflation of criticism with Israel and Zionism with anti-Semitism is false and is used to attack academic freedom. We have seen no evidence of behavior or speech by Muhammad El Kurd that would warrant disinviting him from UVM. The lecture series has multiple connections to the University of Vermont and we have welcomed speakers to campus with support of academic departments and groups for two decades. These events have often been controversial and of course not everyone agrees with the positions represented by the speakers. The sharing of ideas the willingness to hear different perspectives and engage with difficult topics are at the heart of the university's mission to expand knowledge and foster debate. Mohammed El Kurd's scheduled lecture is entirely consistent with UVM's mission to give voice to diverse populations and foster a multiplicity of perspectives. Preventing Mohammed El Kurd from appearing on campus sends a chilling message that Palestinians are not welcome here. It contributes to the repression that is ongoing of free speech just when we need pluralism and open exchange the most. UVM did not uncancel the election. And the two groups that I have mentioned here put a lot of work to organize a virtual screening of the speech, which will still be happening online and now in partnership with Kmart Visual. So I'm going to share where you can see it in Berlin. It will be hosted virtually this evening at 7 p.m. 
If you are a UVM student, there will be a screening on campus at Morrill Hall, room 10. The Young DSA is posting a screening as well with a location provided upon online registration. Go to their Instagram. For community members in the larger Burlington area, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine have organized a screening event at the Burlington Friends. And Students for Justice in Palestine have organized a screening at the Mind Justice Office. I think that the tragic way that this event has unfolded really brings home that this is about all of us. It is about our freedom as well and how policies can limit freedom and expression here as well. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for joining our voices together. And I wanted to bring up Kayla and Pony. Folks, we're so grateful that you all could be out here today standing in solidarity with Palestine and with justice, right, which we know is what we do in public together. It's something we create together through the power of our relationships and our organizing. And so to wrap this up, we are going to follow opponents' lead in a couple of minutes and march to the top of Church Street and chant and make our presence known, respectfully, clearly. Um, and then we'll disband from up there. And of course, disbanding from here is not ending the work. We need all of you in this work for the long haul. So talk to each other, organize together, figure out what your next steps are, take care of each other. And with that, Tony, I'll pass it to you. Um, I'm going to do another call and response. You say what I say. Jews say! Jews say! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Jews say! Jews say! Free Gaza! Free Gaza! Jews say! Jews say! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Jews say! Jews say! Free Gaza! Free Gaza!
that's cute. Can you take like this so I can take a picture though? Sorry about that. I just want to take a picture. You're good. This is locking good. Yeah, up there. you guys Thank <laughs> you. 
you want a hook? <laughs> okay. I can attempt to. Okay. It's just here. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking if I wanted to trade holding the camera. I didn't realize you were taking all your picture. Oh. I got you. <laughs> I was just asking for holding so I can take all his pictures here. Too close. You can zoom it out. Okay.
can you talk a little bit about why you're here at this rally? Yeah, um, I, it's my sister, we're Jewish and um, as the sign says, genocide is not a Jewish value. I think um, I understand the incredible like hurt and terror Jewish people, our people have experienced and um, in no way do I believe that justifies the m massacre that's been happening and is happening very, very intensely right now in Gaza. So we're here to join a lot of other Jewish folks in Vermont who believe deeply in the, in the um, liberation of Palestinian people and that we don't want genocide or massacre happening in our name or with our money. Awesome. Anyone else? Cover it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think one other piece is uh, a central part of Judaism is the idea of tikkun olam, which means to heal the world. And this is the opposite of healing. Genocide, ethnic cleansing is not, as it says, that's not my Jewish value. That's not my Judaism. Um, and I think the ways in which Jewish people have been conflated with the actions of the Israeli government um, create a picture as if being critical of their uh, actions is inherently anti-Semitic, and I think that that is, could not be farther from the truth because, as Emma said, I think uh, Jewish people have thousands and thousands of years of like felt history of what it means to be persecuted, and that informs many of us to deeply believe in not doing that to other people, and in, uh, yeah, just supporting Palestinians' ultimate rights to um, freedom and liberation and sovereignty. Um, do you guys, like here in Vermont, how do you see um, like community coming together around this and um, like sort of the spreading of, um, you know, a lot of people up until a couple weeks ago didn't really know um, about the occupation in Gaza. So I'm, I'm wondering if you've noticed like um, a, a coming together of the Vermont Jewish community um, or yeah, just any observations about that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think I think worldwide we're actually seeing people convene. I've been like so moved watching videos of people, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, like in the streets, like fervently sort of uh, articulating a stance of believing in the self-determination and freedom of Palestinian people. And I think that's also true here. Um, I yeah, as you can see, Vermont's a small place, and I think in Crete, over and over there's like really meaningful turnout of folks who are interested both in learning more about what's happening in Israel and Gaza and Palestine, um, and are really interested in like using um, like organizing ourselves around being having sort of being being Jews who like are just anti-Zionist, like we don't um, having a critique of the uh, Israel. Israel's military occupation of Palestine, having a critique of Zionism, and like that not being, and so being like deeply, deeply connected to Jewish community and like our Jewish ancestry. Yeah. Yeah. You got a question? Yeah. Uh, what are y'all asking the people of Vermont to do today? What are you asking the people of Vermont to do? Yeah, I mean specifically this rally specifically is I think like you know, stop, like, as a harm reduction strategy right now, which is just, like, calling for an immediate ceasefire. So, like, all bombs and, like, all uh, manners of killing Palestinians need to stop immediately. People are dying at, like, unbelievable rates right now. Um, and children and that's dying. just, yeah, like, well, thousands of children, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's, like, the most immediate action, and this specifically is, is a cease, is sort of a, a call around ceasefire. And I think many, many of us have, like, a much longer-term vision of actually, like, the sovereignty and self-determination of Palestinian people, which means that Israel would fully end an occupation of Palestinian land. I mean, Palestinians would have the right to return. They'd have the ability to, to, to govern themselves, and they would, like, all terror would be ended um, yeah, people like meaningfully would have basic human rights. Um, yeah, and I think ultimately thinking about what does it look like for Jewish people and Palestinian people to live under one state with a democratic leadership, majority of Palestinians, in my understanding, support a, a vision in which actually Palestinians and Jews are able um, to share a, a democratic government.
you know, and Jews and um, Muslims and Christians lived in the land of Palestine for thousands and thousands of years, like in community and in harmony. Like that's a very, very possible, most of history, that's actually what happened. So I, the, the ability to return to that, I think is very possible. Um, but there needs to be the organizing and political will among folks outside of Palestine t to actually help support that to happen. And I think a huge piece of that is the Israeli, the United States government needs to stop funding. The United States government gives three, four billion dollars a year to the Israeli occupation of Palestine. Um, and so, obviously, I think in this vision too, the United States would like fully defund um, the Israeli army. And um, a tangible step that anyone can take towards that is we met with a representative from Senator Welch's office earlier before the rally, and he was saying that yeah. folks would be surprised by how few calls and emails they get about things, yeah. and that um, even though the senator doesn't hear the voicemails specifically or read the emails, he gets reports of like the kind of constituent engagement. And so for people that actually call his office Bernie's office, Becca Ballant's office, um, consistently and regularly, and if everyone does that every day and gets a few friends to do it every day, that um, that message actually gets across to our representatives, and there's a resolution that's been introduced in the House um, to call for a ceasefire, but there hasn't in the Senate. So in the House, the message is to support the resolution, and in the Senate, the uh, message and request is to put one forward. We heard at the rally today that the Jewish Voice for Peace was calling for an apartheid free zone in Vermont and Burlington specifically. What does that mean? I don't I don't I don't actually think I'm the best person to answer that question. My understanding is that it's like a sort of a structural like um, citywide commitment to uh, to like have a critique of the apartheid, Israel's apartheid, um, and to like support ending apartheid, and to have like um, a clear position against uh, genocide and racism that Palestinian people experience. Um, and yeah, I don't feel like I'm the best to ask about that very specific like um, <laughs> organizing right now. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that much about it. We were wondering like about that too and like just trying to brainstorm what that might mean and we're thinking similarly like the uh, the defunding of the Israeli occupation in, in Vermont so I'm not sure but I think that's probably part of it yeah and there's also a really intimate relationship between even like poli United States police but the Burlington police and this Israeli IDF and that like there's tons of train the there's Burlington police officers that have gone to Israel to get trained by the IDF the, um, which is the Israeli army so I think also um, part of like defunding Israeli occupation of, of Palestine is also like cutting ties with that with the IDF. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is specifically a part of um, JBP's organizing around apartheid free zone here but there also are national boycotts going on. Um, I think Starbucks is a really good example. I've seen videos mostly on social media of people who work at Starbucks saying that they've seen like 30 40 percent fewer customers in the last like week or so um, and so I don't I imagine that at some level there would also be conversation around what type of businesses um, are we either hosting in Burlington or is the Burlington city government investing in that um, are helping to fund the apartheid and, and the ethnic cleansing um, I know that there are a lot of like really uh, powerful um, communities and groups doing work like um, JVP and I'm wondering if are there certain groups that you guys are going to in Burlington um, to rallies or protests or just to get more information I mean I, I don't have an answer to um, yeah I've been following uh, the organizing JVP is doing um, and uh, Vermont Justice Vermonters for Justice in Palestine um, Jewish Voices for Peace is like a kind of growing chapter right now and I think they've been taking a lot of leadership. This was organized by them. Um, yeah, I think those are the main two places I've sort of been turning um, organization-wise. Back, do you have any other questions? Anything else you guys want to add? No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. that was awesome.